wondering if Montessori or Waldorf schooling is better. In this video, we're going to look at the criticisms of each of these, and you'll hopefully learn how to vet them to make sure that whatever you're implementing or sending your child off to aligns with your values. If you're jumping in here, be sure to go back and check out the first two videos of this series, especially the similarities video where I talk about just some of the underlying foundational aspects that might surprise you and certainly color some of the criticisms that each of these face. And if you're new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. And I'm a mom to a four-year-old and 18-month-old. I attended Montessori schooling myself, as did my daughter, and she also attended Waldorf. So this is our journey through all of that. I want to open the Montessori's criticism section with a little bit of history that really colors all of the criticisms I'm going to talk about, except for the first one, which is just like a trademarking issue. And before we get into that history, just kind of like a little background story about my personal opinions and beliefs and let me know if you have questions about it because it's um a view that some people get really easily and it's a view that's very abstract for a lot of people but one of my major criticisms about curriculums being developed today is that they're being developed and taught from a place of wounding meaning that when we experience those things we can feel and carry forward that same wounded energy into our day-to-day -day lives so if that's too abstract of an idea an example for you taylor swift's reputation album very angry album if you have ever listened to that album on repeat over and over and over again and then paid attention to the interactions in your life it's very likely that you yourself got more angry maybe found more drama in your relationships because you were carrying forward and enacting out the energy in which she created that album art touches us deeply inside and pain begs to be healed and so in my opinion child development education these are all forms of art and while we talked about steiner's waldorf school as being a culmination of his philosophical views which we talked about in the first video of this series we never really talked about what montessori schools were a culmination of for her and that was her experience or lack thereof of being a mother so maria montessori gave birth to her one and only child mario montessori in 1898 whom she immediately sent off to live with another family becoming a mother and then giving up her son completely pivoted her career. She actually previously was working with people in like asylums and institutions, not with children. But this experience and then having to deal with the wound of this experience shifted her to become obsessed with focusing on children. And more than that, to focusing on independence. Like she became obsessed with the idea that independence was the antidote to slavery. And she went as far as to come up with ways for homes and household work to function independently of the mother so that women could go out and work. And she instilled this same concept as you see from so many Montessori quotes and so much of the early childhood method to create freedom for children as early as possible, independence from the family. And all of these beliefs, this need for sovereignty, really culminated with the creation of her schools, not even 10 years after the birth of her son in 1907, whom she didn't even connect with him again until a few years after the inception of Casa dei Bambini. And even after they reconnected, it wasn't until the end of her life that she recognized him as her son. So while he did go on to do work with her later in his life, like they never actually said hey this is my mom this is my son <laughs> bring all of this up you know because it's right or wrong shame or anything like that but because you'll see how the energy of her wound which she created the Montessori method from colors the very criticisms that Montessori faces today so when it comes to the criticisms of Montessori one of the major ones in modern times is that the name was never trademarked so you're gonna have like literally any daycare any preschool all sorts of random people throwing Montessori up in the title maybe they'll buy a couple of the materials to make the classroom look legit but they've never actually had an accredited teacher or or any sort of accreditation certifications done to qualify them so there's really no quality control here and you kind of just don't know what you're really getting sometimes until you get in there whereas with Waldorf schools the name is trademark and so there's a lot fewer Waldorf schools out there as a result if you are in an area and you are interested in Waldorf schooling and there's no Waldorf school near you a lot of the times nature school will have a lot of Waldorf names interwoven into them but obviously they can't call themselves 
themselves Waldorf schools. Now that's not to say that all nature schools are Waldorf inspired or aligned. You definitely kind of just make sure you do your own research and do your vetting there. One of the other major criticisms of Montessori is because of the focus of core academics. Some believe children are forced to grow up faster than they maybe should. Now because core academics are available as an option in Montessori preschools and a lot of parents tend to choose Montessori schools in hopes of producing a high achieving intelligent child which there's nothing wrong with but because Montessori schools are not trademarked and they may or may not have any certified teachers or accreditations. Sometimes places that call themselves Montessori may send home or force kids to do core academics before they're ready, which is the antithesis of Montessori. But because that is what many American parents have associated Montessori with or begin to expect, and thus it could actually create a child that does not like learning. And then beyond that, but kind of in the same thread, some of the major criticisms with Montessori in the early childhood setting, we know from Montessori's work that children from zero to six years old are in the absorbent mind stage. So they're really kind of taking everything in, everything's being recorded and imprinted, but simultaneously they're being left to select and choose what materials they're engaging with in the classroom. And because teachers are taught to just observe and follow the child and kind of check their personalities at the door, this can actually lead to a very repressed nature in children and even like an untethered feeling, which is what happened with my daughter because again they're absorbing everything and if what's being modeled for them is adults sitting back quietly taking things in that's kind of also what they're going to model so their personality is left to develop but then they're also supposed to be absorbing everything so it can end up not for all kids but if Montessori is not working for you that could be one of the problems where your child needs more modeled for them and additionally because of the standoffish nature of Montessori teachers if you're touring or unfamiliar with the practice they can seem kind of cold which that's not necessarily the reality at all but if you were to go to like a Montessori tour and then go to a Waldorf tour where the teachers wear like aprons to hold all of the treasures the kids collect for them there's just a very big difference in the warmth between the two and then the major point of criticism for Montessori children like once they become adults is that because as children they always got to choose their own work and a lot of their time they were taught to work independently or parallel with one another as adults they have a really hard time in teams or groups. Now if your child ends up being a self-motivated introvert like me, this is a fantastic setting for them to grow up. But if you have an extroverted child that wants to create and play in teams, possibly not the best setting for them. Lastly, Montessori herself had some controversial views on socialism, feminism, and even the global citizen concept she came up with has undergone a lot of scrutiny, especially in the most recent years with the rise of some modern day conspiracy theories. And then my personal complaint with Montessori schools in modern times, a lot of the times they're inside for just way too much time during the day in early childhood. Now, in terms of the major complaints with Waldorf, I never sees the biggest criticism around his racist views, particularly around his beliefs of reincarnation through the races. This is something that many modern day Waldorf schools rebuke, but of course you may still find that those beliefs are held by a teacher or a particular school. What I wanna point out here is that racist views are something that we can find in any type of school today and it's a tragedy that we're dealing with this in modern times but it's also kind of a blessing that we know the history of Waldorf where like it's very easy to have your guard up knowing this information knowing what to bet for knowing what to look for versus just sending your kid to school thinking it's safe and then you don't know what's happening in the classroom so kind of on that same note there's a lot of debate around Steiner's anti-semitic views as well and truthfully both of these concepts his racist beliefs and his anti-semitic ones hold a lot of truth and validity to them as well as he like denounced them at certain points and so all that's to say like his views on race and semitism were definitely not linear but the moral of all of this is you're gonna have different interpretations and beliefs look at everything with a keen eye have your guard up ask questions unless you're the type of person that believes we need to burn everything down i think this is a good example of taking the good being on guard for the bad and just making sure that you are moving forward accordingly in a way that is well vetted and well aligned with your intentions because at the end of the day you are their parent and you are responsible for where you're sending them to school and for what is being allowed in your home. Additionally due to some of Steiner's beliefs around karma and that it is a soul seeking to emancipate and separate from certain human experiences some teachers in Waldorf settings that do subscribe more to the esoteric beliefs of Steiner may not intervene on bullying because they believe that it is a soul calling 
forth that experience. And it is only that soul who can heal from that experience. So it would be a disservice to intervene and it would be very codependent, if you will, to say, nope, I'm gonna handle this for you because you're not strong enough to. There's a lot of layers in that. If you are a parent struggling with that, what I would say is you can equip your child with the tools and the voice to handle that bullying. That's probably a whole other video on how to address that. And there are a lot of age dependent ways to work with kids. I personally think it's a lot easier to work with kids on a concept like that in the zero to six, seven plane than once you get into adolescence. A lot of people distrust the spiritual and religious undertones of the education, but it's also like in all of the nature elements of Waldorf. So there's lots of festivals and being barefoot in the ground and flowers and a maypole to worshiping paganism. Waldorf is a non-religious education. So I think it's just something to sit with if that's a fear of yours and acknowledge that most of modern day Christianity is heavily influenced by paganism as well and most people in our society today toe this line so it's not like an isolated standard that should only be held and reflected upon Waldorf if that is something that brings up feelings for you. It's something for you to kind of sit through, work with, understand. As far as whether or not Montessori or Waldorf education is better, that is going to be a personal opinion and up to you. And more than that, up to your child, I think. I'd love to hear in the comments below which one you guys lean towards now knowing all of this information. We personally fully believe in a hybrid. I went to a Montessori school in my early years. I really loved it. My son, I can tell, is very much a Montessori mind. My daughter, her light went went out at a Montessori school and we had to adapt and adjust and she has flourished since introducing more Waldorf concepts. Her anxiety's gone down, her sleep's gotten better, she's just really a new child. That's why I say like it's important to know the criticisms but sometimes we have to go beyond them because we have to meet our kids with where they're at <laughs> if it's not necessarily what we thought it was going to be. And so the best thing that we can do in that situation is making sure that we are immersing ourselves in understanding some of the things that they may be exposed to that we we don't agree with so that we know how to either pull them out from it and find a different solution or we know how to talk to them so that they can navigate that situation on their own because they're not going to be in bubbles forever and it's important that in an age appropriate and developmentally appropriate way we are exposing them challenging them and cultivating an intentional worldview there's no perfect educational philosophy or methodology that's why as parents we need to be like hands-on and involved in understanding what it is we are bringing into our homes and our lives you know if you guys want me to do any spin-off videos from this because i dropped a lot in here today and i hope you guys find it helpful if you did give it a like share it with a friend who might find it helpful. Be sure to go back, check out my Montessori gift guides, check out my Love Every Play Kit reviews. As always, my name is Rachel. Have a good one.